So now that you know how to use a dichotomous key, let's go ahead and take the next step to make a dichotomous key. So you take a look at this handout here. This is some of the best artistry that I've ever created. These are my representations of 10 different people. Uh, you can see that, uh, uh, you can see whether they're male, male or female, their hair color, eye color. You see the height, see some other characteristics. If you take a look at uh, the drawing itself, Gail has curly hair, Damon has straight hair, Chip has a pointy nose, uh, Melody has attached ear lobes, but Arthur has free ear lobes. So there are different characteristics you can use to identify who these people are. Um, you are going to make a dichotomous key for these people. There's Melody. All right, so <clears throat> as you look at these 10 people, the first thing you notice is that there's some males and some females, first thing I notice. And so I'm gonna use that as my first characteristic. I'm gonna divide the whole group into two. The two groups are male and careful now, you could say is a female, but let's say is not a male. Because if we get into the habit of doing this, the making of our dichotomous key will be so much more simple. So you can only have one, one characteristic or one, one statement that is true. Either this person is a male or this person is not a male. This person may have curly hair or what's the opposite of curly hair? Is it necessarily straight? What about wavy? How about if you use hair color? is the opposite of blonde brown. Well, what about redheads? So if you've got to make it so that there are only two choices, not more than two choices. So is a male and is it not a male? So as I make this dichotomous key, dichotomous key I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at <clears throat> only the males now. And I'm going to pick something that splits just the guys into two groups. Now, I don't care what that thing is. Um, has a pointed nose uh, or does not have a pointed nose or maybe it uh, has a height of five seven or shorter and does not have a height of five seven or shorter or the opposite of that one would be is five eight or taller um, so the the two choices have to be diametrically opposed and you need to be in either one of the two groups there's no in between so pick a characteristic and do that then go to the next paired statements go to number three pick all the people who have a let's go back to pointed nose who do have a pointed nose and then go ahead and pick something else that separates out those people who have only pointed noses so we take a look at our picture Here's a guy with a point nose. There's Alfred, Damon, Chip, Arthur, Daryl. They all have pointed noses. So let's pick something that that separates them out. Brown hair, black hair, black hair, uh, blonde hair, and black hair. So maybe it has black hair and does not have black hair. Something like that. So um, you keep going until you have um, each person's name appearing once and only once uh, in this column here. So right now you have numbers, but eventually you keep going, you're gonna get the names of all 10 people. Okay, so finish that up. That's part one of the lab. Now the second part of the lab is you're gonna key out seven different plants. Um, so um, we're gonna use a key that says at the very top it's for eastern united states trees but many of those trees as i said earlier um, are transplanted from from the east coast so we can totally use uh, our eastern united states key successfully here on the west coast so we need a table like this where you're going to put the plant number the scientific name and the common name now in the laboratory i have 
specimens and sort of us walking around um, where we are. I have specimens uh, that are, are made and mounted on large pieces of paper. Uh, and so we call those herbarium specimens. Those of you who, in the, who are in the uh, in-class lab uh, have seen them in laboratory or at least will have the opportunity to do that. If you're uh, doing this lab virtually, the, um, you don't get that opportunity, but you have a live thing. Hey, look, all around me today, I have in my backyard, you know, all kinds of different plants and trees that I could classify. So, um, so take some around you. You can number them one through seven. Actually, one, let's change just to number one, and, uh, and then do six more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And use the key that is attached to um, uh, to the uh, document that you can access in Canvas to uh, to figure out the name of the plant. Remember to start with the first paired statements: one A, one B, and then keep going, keep going, keep going until you come up with the name. So that is uh, that is the lab on taxonomy. Remember the parts. Uh, the two parts uh, together we saw how to use a key and the first part you're going to key out and make a key for all the 10 drawings that I uh, shared with you and then on the second part part two what you're doing is you're, you're going to take six leaves and plants that are around you um, and uh, you're going to classify the uh, classify the plant, the tree, uh, figure out the name by using the key that is provided for you. Okay, so have fun doing the lab and use it as an opportunity to walk around and get outside and remember the social distance from uh, everyone. Wear a mask if you see anyone, but enjoy nature while you're out and collect some leaves and uh, classify some trees. Have a great time. We'll see you soon. I'm Mr. Vallejo, thanks for coming to biology class. Bye now.